Welcome to Lunch with the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark. We're in Ezra chapter 8. We're going to be starting verse 18 this lesson. But before we begin, Jeremiah 15, 16. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Now, as we left off last lesson, uh, Ezra and uh, these about 2,000 people now, they are uh, camped out near the, at the river that goes to Ahava. And uh, Ezra overlooks the people and he finds out that there's no Levites there. So he's going to be sending uh, some men to uh, the city or the town of Cassiphia to a man named Ido who uh, uh, has, seems that he has charge over this city has some kind of uh, rule over the city and uh, uh, to try to encourage some Levites to go with them to Jerusalem. So we start in uh, verse 18 and it says, and, and by the good hand of our God upon us, they brought us a man of understanding of the sons of Mai, the son of Levi, the son of Israel, and Sherebiah with his sons and his brethren, 18. And Hashabiah, and with him Jeshiah of the sons of Merari, his brethren and their sons, 20. Also of the Nethanims, whom David and the princes had appointed for the service of the Levites, 220 Nethanims, all of them were expressed by name. Now, Ezra here gives the, an account of those who uh, came with uh, the men that uh, Ezra sent to Cassiphia, and they go there and they encourage Levites to come uh, and join this company of people that are going down to Jerusalem. And uh, this is a list of the names of uh, the people that, not a list of the names, but a number of the people that come down, uh, decide that they will go uh, with Ezra and this group of people to uh, Jerusalem, to the temple and to serve in the temple. And you know, Ezra here, he was very satisfied with the results. And yet Ezra was sensitive enough to know that God, that 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 he was he was sensitive enough to God to know that the results were really because it was because God's hand was upon them. As we see in verse 18, it says here, and by the good hand of our God upon us, right? By the good hand of our God upon us. Ezra realized that 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 it, it's that it's not because of human effort or human wisdom. Ultimately, God moved in the hearts of people to return and to serve in the temple, and this is what this is uh, this is the reason why they had success. It wasn't because of their you know the words they used, their the kind of people they were that that spoke these words to encourage them to come down. No, it was it was by the good hand of God that was upon them. That, that they got these results and that these Levites um, decided to come and, and, and to join this company. You know, when we, are need, when we are in need and that need is met, do we see it as the work of God or do we see it as happen chance, right? Or do we see it as a coincidence or do we see the results as from our own human effort. We need to understand that God is more at work in our lives than we know. And Ezra gave credit to God because it was God. When Ezra sends these people out, go to Cassiphia, try to get Levites to come and, and go to see Ido and, and encourage some Levites to come. But all the time, I'm sure Ezra was praying and seeking God. And that he was, you know, trusting God to bring the people, the Levites, uh, to go with them to, to Jerusalem. 
And then it says here in verse 20, in verse 20 it says, Also of the Nethanims, whom David and the princes had appointed for the service of the Levites, 200, uh, 220 Nethanims, all of them were expressed by name. Now, again, concerning, concerning this group called the Nethanims, uh, if you're just, you know, tuning into these lessons and you are wondering who are these Nethanims, who is this group of people called the Nethanims, then what you can do is uh, go back to uh, my lesson on Ezra chapter 2, verses 43 to 54, and you'll see in that study, it's a, it's a, it's a study concerning the Nethanims. It's included in that, in that lesson. And you'll learn a lot more about the Nethanims, who they are, and, and uh, how they became to be known as Nethanims. And uh, this group of people called the Nethanims there, they're, they're uh, an interesting group of people. And they, uh, I kind of, in a sense, a little bit, I don't know if, I don't know if uh, the life in uh, Babylon or in Persia at this time was, uh, 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 was hard for them or not. But when the call came to go back to Jerusalem, you know, they responded. They responded. And, and in a sense, as I said a few lessons ago, they didn't have to. They weren't Jews. And, and they had freedom there in, in their, in a sense, they had some freedom away from the Jews in their captivity. But when the call came to go back to Jerusalem and to serve in the temple, you know what? A lot of them went back. A lot of them went back. And that's uh, that's uh, admirable for me, you know, that they go back and 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 uh, uh, take up their duties at the temple all over again. All right. Now, in uh, Ezra chapter uh, eight, verses twenty-one to twenty-three, we see Ezra. Ezra here proclaims a fast. All right. So <clears throat> Ezra. Ezra was the one who called for this fast, all right? It wasn't God. God did not move upon the, upon, uh, the hearts of people and, and move them to, to do this fast. This was a fast that Ezra uh, felt was needed uh, before they take this journey down to Jerusalem. So he says here in verses 21 to 23, Then I proclaimed a fast there at the river of Ahava, that we might afflict ourselves before our God to seek of him a right way for us and for our little ones and for all of our substance. For I was ashamed to, to require of the king a band of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy in the way, because we had spoken unto the king, saying, The hand of our God is upon us all them for good that seek him. But his power and his wrath is against all them that forsake him. So we fasted and besought our God for this, and he was entreated of us. So, you know, the question is, is how often, how often do we, do we, uh, on our own fast that we might ask God for something? How often do we, uh, do we fast when an important decision is, is taking place? In, in Isaiah, in Isaiah, you may say, well, you know, I have, uh, you know, uh, sometimes, sometimes I think people, Christians think fasting is, you know, legalistic. You know, it's depriving them and, and it's, it's a little bit too, um, how can I say, well, you know, uh, asceticism, where you're denying yourself, you know, fleshly pleasure so that you can draw close to God and, and things like that. And they see it more as a, as a um, legalistic approach to God. And therefore, uh, Christians have a, have a tendency to want to shy, <laughs> shy away from fasting, all right? But it's not that. In, in Isaiah 58, verse 6, uh, whenever I teach on fasting, I always go to this verse. It says, Is not this the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness, 
and to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke. This was, uh, you know, fasting is not to be a legalistic thing. It, it's, it's to be a, an approach to God. It's to dedicate our hearts and our lives to God for a certain, you know, for a time period, whether it be for, uh, you know, a breakfast or a lunch or maybe the whole day. But you, you know, it, it's a time where we dedicate that time unto God to seek his will. So he says, you know, fasting is for the purpose of loosing the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens. It's not, fasting isn't to be a burden in itself. Fasting is so that our burdens will be, will be unloosed, will be, we will be relieved of burdens, not to add a burden to our life. You know, fasting should be done in the motivation of love and not for selfish reasons. Now, fasting should not be forced or pressured by others, but a desire of your heart for something, right? Fasting, fasting should take place when you have a desire for something, whether it's God's guidance in your life, you have an important decision to make of moving or a job or something, and, and you want to, you want God's leading on it. So you dedicate, you know, time out away from food so you can concentrate on God to get his will uh, for, a, for a decision. You want something, you want a job or, or, or maybe you're fasting for, you know, praying for someone's health or, or what, whatever it is, or praying to buy something. Um, just, you know, this is, this is what it's about. It's not, it's not, fasting is not to be forced upon yourself or to be, to be uh, pressured by others. Um, you know, you need to fast, uh, you need to do this. No, it should be led by God. Don't let fasting be a work or become a burden in your life. You know, Satan will use fasting in order to frustrate you. You have to understand, Satan can use fasting to frustrate you. And don't let fasting become a work or a burden uh, in, in your life. You know, some, like with the, the uh, Pharisees and scribes back then, you know, we fast twice a week. You know, we fast uh, two days every week. And, well, it became, their fasting became, uh, you know, a, a legalistic thing to, towards God. Uh, can you imagine today, if you fasted, say, every Tuesday, right? Every Tuesday you fasted unto God, and after a while it becomes a, it becomes a, a, a ritual, it becomes a religious thing, and not, and not something that's dedicated unto God. You know, I mean, it becomes a, becomes a burden to you, because, you know, let's, let's say, you're, you know, your best friend has a birthday on a Tuesday, right? And, and you fast on Tuesdays, and then, then all of a sudden, you know, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You're going to keep your, keep your uh, legalistic burden, or are you going to go to the birthday party, right? Has, don't, don't allow things in, um, in your walk with God to become legalistic and become a burden uh, on, in, your, in your walk with Him, uh, and, and it affect other people's lives also. But let it be something that's motivated by love, motivated by, by a need, and and then then when you when you fast and it's over, it's over, all right. The purpose of fasting is to dedicate that time to prayer and to the Word of God. It's not for selfish reasons or for pursuits. When you fast, the purpose of fasting. Is if you if you take a uh, if you take a lunch time uh, and you want to fast, it's not for you know it's not for you to you know take well I'm going to fast you know today at lunch time and then and and what you do on the lunch time is you know you get in your car and you go shopping or something or or whatever and and no fasting when you fast it's so that you take that time and you you spend it in prayer you spend it in the Word of God. Fasting is not to be is not to be you know used for selfish reasons. 
if you fast for supper or something and instead of instead of eating supper well you know you're watching a movie or you're watching some sports event or you're going out with friends or something like this you know somewhere to the store no that's not fasting that's just abstaining from food okay that's all that is that that is not the definition of fasting when you when you fast you take that time and you get alone with God and you pray and you read his word to get guidance and and to draw close to him that's fasting when we fast we want to grab a hold of God and that's what fasting is about it's about grabbing a hold of God for whatever reason you're you're fasting for and uh, again don't allow fasting be to become a religion to you become a burden where you you know you feel like you have to do it every week or you know or every two weeks or once a month you have to fast like it becomes a legalistic thing because I'm telling you Satan will take that and he'll use it against you so but the fasting is so that you can draw close to God to get his guidance to get his wisdom his heart on on whatever you're you're fasting for now in verse 21 it says, For I was ashamed to require of the king a band of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy in the way, because we had spoken unto the king, saying that the hand of our God is upon all them for good that seek him, but his power and his wrath is against all them that forsake him. You know, in verse 21, they were fasting that God would show them the way in which he wants them to travel to, towards Jerusalem. And God, you know, God's way is the safe way. And they weren't sure. Ezra wasn't sure. Ezra and probably the other leaders of this group weren't sure which way should we go, which, which, which uh, direction should we travel down to Jerusalem. And they, they, so here they go, they fast before God, they dedicate uh, uh, some time in, in, in prayer and in God's word to get his, his, his heart concerning which way they should go. Listen, do we pray before a journey? Do we pray before getting a job? Do we pray before we buy a house? or before we choose a church to go to? Do we pray and fast before, before we make important decisions, who to marry, right? Whether, whether to have children or not, do we fast and pray? Do we see these decisions as God requiring from us a decision? Or do we see them as an opportunity to include God in the decision because because he sees and knows all are we you know do we see uh, these decisions of buying a house as god requiring us well that, you know father you know which 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 house should i buy this one or that one? well that's up to you you know it's your house you're going to be buying no no do do we pray and seek god's heart as to which house to buy right as to which which uh, person to marry or which job to take do we see it as 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 that that is our decision or do we include god in the decision god sees all and he knows all he knows the future and therefore we need to include god in our decisions now in ezra chapter in ezra uh, verse 22 which i just read you know ezra Ezra is just like a lot of us. He had spoken great words to the king of how God would protect his people on this journey. But that but that was when he was back, but that was when he was back in the safety of Babylon. Now he is out in the real world with his feet in the dust and overlooking the people who are going with him and he begins a little bit to doubt God's protection for them like Peter who stands in the boat and speaks great words of faith he begins to sink when he is actually 
out on the water. Right? He says here in verse 22, you know, I was ashamed to require of the king a band of soldiers and horsemen. He says, because we had spoken unto the king, saying, the hand of our God is upon all them that, that do good and that seek him. Right? Uh, but his power and his wrath is against all them that forsake him, right? So when he was with the king, you know, Ezra had all kinds of confidence in God and trust in God. But now that he's away from the king and he's away from uh, from uh, the, the capital there and they're out there in the river of Ahava and they're getting ready to actually make this journey. Now, <laughs> now there's a little bit of, you know, concern there in Ezra's heart that he wants God to protect him. He's, his feet are out there in the real world now. But thank God that there is a verse 23, right? Thank God there's a verse 23. It says, God was entreated for them when they fasted and they dedicated their lives unto God for the direction to take. God was entreated unto them even though they feared, yet God did not rebuke them for their fear, but graciously answered their prayers. And by this, he strengthened their faith. Verse 23 says, so we fasted and besought our God for this, right? We fasted and we besought our God for this. What is this? It's the direction to take. It's God's protection. And what is the last part of verse 23 says? It says, and he was entreated of us. God heard them and God heard them and God protected them. And he, and, and he was with them, right? Their, their dedication unto God through prayer and fasting, God answered it, right? We're going to start verse 24 next lesson. But until then, walk with the Lord. I know he walks with you.